23rd of March, 1208, Pope Innocent III, furious at John for opposing Stephen Langton's appointment as Archbishop of Canterbury, placed England under a general interdict. This was the religious equivalent to a general strike. Priests were not allowed to celebrate mass, anoint the dying, or bury the dead in church grounds. Even the ringing of church bells was forbidden. This was a low point of John's relationship with the church. Yet just seven years later, the Pope was John's ally in the Magna Carta crisis, declaring the charter null and void, shameful and illegal. But what led to this dramatic turn of events? John was not the first Plantagenet king to have a difficult relationship with the church. His father, Henry II, was held responsible for the murder of his archbishop and former friend, Thomas Becket. John's elder brother, Richard, taxed the church heavily to fund his wars, and both sold bishoprics to their favourites. However, John's relationship with the church was particularly poor. He left bishoprics empty so he could collect their income for himself. He was accused of blasphemy, and he had illicit affairs with the wives and daughters of his barons. There are three factors to explain how we get from John being excommunicated to counting the Pope as his ally. Firstly, John backed down in the Stephen Langton dispute. Faced with the threat of a French invasion and domestic unrest, John made peace with the Pope. Langton returned to England, John accepted the Pope as his overlord, and agreed to pay an annual tribute. Secondly, John promised to go on crusade. But this too was a political calculation. Subjects and foreign princes were forbidden by the church to rebel or make war on a king preparing for or on crusade. Lastly, the Pope, the direct ruler of large parts of central Italy himself, was keen to quash any attempts by subjects to hold rulers to account. Kings, Innocent believed, should be responsible only to God and his representative on earth, the Pope. Back in England, however, John's relationship with his archbishop remained strained. Langton was an outspoken critic of bad kingship and was sympathetic to the Baron's cause. It's also likely that Langton, in addition to mediating at Runnymede, was in part responsible for drafting Magna Carta. After all, the first clause of the Charter states, the English church shall be free and shall have its rights undiminished and its liberties unimpaired. Even after the papal annulment, Langton remained committed to upholding the settlement reached at Runnymede. He continued to mediate between opposing sides, and copies of the charter were sent to English cathedrals for safekeeping. Langton also refused the Pope's order to excommunicate the rebel barons, leading to his own suspension. The Archbishop and the Pope only reconciled after the death of King John on the 18th of October 1216. The crown then passed to John's nine-year-old son, the future Henry III who relied upon William Marshall and the Pope's ambassador, Pandolf, to defend his right to the throne. Magna Carta was reissued, stripped of its most radical clauses and sealed by both Marshall and Pandolf. Transformed from a shameful document, the Charter became a freely given manifesto of good government.